Hi and good evening viewers you're watching Sunset Television and this is the news with me Rashika in the next half an hour we take you through the top stories of the day beat national international sports and business but first up the headlines Monsoon session of parliament to be held from 18 July to 12th of August legislative business to be conducted over 18 sittings in the session Scrutiny of nominations for presidential elections papers of Draupadi Murmu and Yashwant Sinha found to be in order voting to be held on 18th of July Eknath Shinde becomes new chief minister of Maharashtra Devendra Fadnavis takes oath as deputy chief minister cabinet to be expanded soon Government bringing in policy changes to promote MSMEs. Prime Minister Modi underlines their role in shaping self-reliant India at Entrepreneur India Meet. Annual Amarnath Yatra starts from Pahalgam and Baltal camp. First batch of pilgrims leaves for Holi Cave. Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha performs puja at shrine. A quick look at some important developments of the day in our flash news segment. Andhra Pradesh and Gujarat top business reform action plan 2020 rankings in ease of doing business. Center announces seven states as top achievers. Senior IPS officer Vivek Fansalkar takes over from Sanjay Pandey as the new Mumbai Police Chief Commissioner. Vice President M N K and I do greet people on the eve of Lord Jagannath's Rath Yatra. Says entire community comes together in celebration of the grace and divinity of the Lord. Israel's P S L B C fifty three rocket lifts off from Satish Dhawan Space Center at Sri Hari Kota, places three Singapore satellites in orbit. Eight people killed, thirteen injured in a massive landslide in Western Manipur's Noni district. Accident took place at Tupul Yad Railway Camp on Wednesday night. Chinese President Xi Jinping to visit Hong Kong to mark 25th anniversary of city's handover to Communist China. Lone surviving attacker from the group that carried out the November 2015 Paris attacks killing 130 people gets rare life sentence. US singer R Kelly sentenced to 30 years in prison for using celebrity status to sexually abuse children and women. The R&B artist was convicted last September for sex tra trafficking crimes. Novak Djokovic in a COVID vaccine controversy again says he would rather not play in tournaments that required him taking a jab. Hardik Pandya to lead Indian team in first T20 versus England. Kohli, Pant, Bumrah and other regulars to return from second T20 match. The monsoon session of parliament will be held from 18 July to 12th of August. Legislative business will be conducted over 18 sittings in both houses. Timings of houses during the session will be from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. with a lunch break from 1 to 2 p.m. Elections for the post of president and vice president will also be held during the monsoon session. The Rajya Sabha secretary said nomination papers of NDA candidate Draupadi Murmu and opposition candidate Yashwant Sinha for the election of president were found to be in order after scrutiny. According to the presidential election officer and secretary general of Rajya Sabha PC Modi Out of the 150 nomination papers that they received, 28 were rejected at the time of submission. He said the other nominations were rejected due to non-fulfilment of requisite criteria. The final list of candidates will be published in the Gazette after the last date of withdrawal of nominations on 2nd of July. At least 50 proposers and 50 seconders are mandatory for a presidential candidate to file nomination papers. During the period of filing of nomination papers, I had received 115 nomination papers. The nomination papers filed by the following candidates were found to fulfil all the requirements of a valid nomination. One, Shri Mati Draupadi Murmu. Two, Shri Yashwant Sinha. 
Eknath Shinde on Thursday took charge as a new Chief Minister of Maharashtra. Governor Bhagat Singh Koshyari administered him the oath of office and secrecy at a ceremony at the Raj Bhavan in Mumbai. BJP leader and former Chief Minister Devendra Farnavis took oath as a Deputy Chief Minister. Earlier, Farnavis and Shinde met Governor Koshyari at the Raj Bhavan to stake claim to form the government. Later, they announced the decision to form the government at a joint press conference. तो नेचुरल अलाइंस के खिलाफ होकर हम लोग ये महाविकास सागरी बुद्धे अब कुछ करेक्शन हो जाए तो ठीक हो जाएगा और दोनों विचार धारा वाली पार्टी जो है इस राज्य को विकास करे the formation of the new government ends a political crisis that has been underway for the last 10 days in the state. 39 MLAs of the Shiv Sena joined Shinde in his revolt against the party leadership. Losing more than two-thirds of his MLAs, Uddhav Thakre resigned from the chief minister's post on Wednesday. 58-year-old Shinde, who hails from Satara district, is an MLA from Kopri Pachkari in the Thane city. He started out as a grassroots Sena worker and rose to become the most senior Sena minister handling the urban development portfolio in the Uddhav Thakre government. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday said his government is framing new policies that will help the MSME sector realize its potential. Addressing the Udyami Bharat program in New Delhi, Prime Minister Modi said that his government is taking measures to help small businesses increase exports. He added that the center has increased the budget by more than 650% in the last eight years to strengthen the sector. Prime Minister Modi noted that now, for the first time, the turnover of Khadi and village industries has crossed rupees 1 lakh crore. इस सेक्टर की असीम संभावनाओं को ध्यान में रखते हुए निर्णय ले रही है नई नीतियां बना रही है हमारे देश के हर जिले में हर हिस्से में जो हमारे अद्भुत उत्पाद है उन लोकल उत्पादों को हमने ग्लोबल बनाने का संकल्प लिया है Prime Minister Modi also said the micro, small and medium enterprises sector accounts for almost one-third of India's economy and it has a very important role in India's growth journey. Prime Minister launched key initiatives like raising and accelerating MSME performance scheme, capacity building of first-time MSME exporter scheme and new features of the Prime Minister's Employment Generation Program to ramp up the MSME sector. He said that Mudra Yojana has a huge role to play in making entrepreneurship easy for every Indian. The NIA is probing the role, the NIA is probing the role of local self-radicalized groups and international links of the two main accused in the brutal killing of Kanaya Lal in Udaipur on Tuesday. The National Investigating Agency is waiting to get the custody of Riyaz Akhtari and Ghosh Mohammed to begin questioning. The NIA has registered a case under various sections of the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act of the Indian Penal Court. Meanwhile, Rajasthan Chief Minister Ashok Gehroth visited the family of Kanaya Lal in Odaipur. He said the NIA should take up the case in a fast-track court and call for the charge sheet to be filed as soon as possible. NIA bhi twarit karrai karke jitni jaldi ho उतनी जल्दी सजा दिलवाए इनको चलान पेश करके ये अपेक्षा पूरे प्रदेशवासी भी और मैं समझता हूं कि पूरा देशवासी चाहते हैं मेन वायल पुलिस वॉज हैवीली डिप्लॉयड इन उदयपुर टू मेंटेन लॉ एंड ऑर्डर एज थाउजेंड ऑफ पीपल टुक पार्ट इन अ रैली टू प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट द ग्रूस मर्डर National Security Advisor Ji Doval addressed the first meeting of the multi-agency maritime security group on Thursday. He said it is necessary to focus on the security of the maritime sector in an extremely complex and challenging environment. He urged constant coordination among the agencies involved in this. Doval described the Indian Ocean as a great asset for India. So is the important trade route not only for us but globally. We find that the lane number 9 and 10 are all that about 60 to 65 percent of the 
global trade moves. Our energy security for 95 percent, we are dependent on this thing. So from the strategy, from the uh, economy, also from the environmental interest, we have got at this thing because seas are the great this thing. Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat and Telangana are among seven states that have topped the rankings in terms of implementing the Business Reform Action Plan 2020. Himachal Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Odisha and MP are among the other states. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman released the rankings on Thursday. The aspirational category has seven states including Assam, Kerala and Goa. Eleven states and union territories including Delhi, Puducherry and Tripura are placed in the Emerging Business Environment category. Addressing the event, Union Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goel said the decision to ease the process for intrastate supplies will allow companies to engage in e-commerce. The annual Amarnath Yatra has started via Palgam and Baltal in Jammu and Kashmir. The first batch of pilgrims left from Baltal and Nunwan base camps on Thursday. A batch of 2,750 pilgrims left from the Nunwan base camp in Pahalgam. The government and the Sri Amarnath Shrine Board have made elaborate arrangements for the Yatra this year in view of an increase in the number of pilgrims. The 43-day-long pilgrimage to the Amarnath Cave Temple will conclude on August 11th, the day of Raksha Bandhan. Flood situation in Assam worsened on Thursday due to heavy rains in the region. More than 31 lakh people are affected in the state. With 12 people dead in the past 24 hours, the death toll has risen to 151. Many parts of Kachar Silchar town remained underwater for over 11 days. Brahmaputra, Beki, Kopili, Barak and Kushiara rivers are flowing above the danger level. Chief Minister Himanta Baswasarma has ordered relief and rehabilitation efforts in the affected areas. At least eight people were killed in a massive landslide at a railway construction site in Manipur's Noni district. The incident took place at Tupuliad railway construction camp on Wednesday night. Over 70 people are feared trapped under the debris, which includes 43 from the territorial army. Union Home Minister Amit Shah spoke to Manipur Chief Minister N. Biran Singh and Railway Minister Ashwini Vaishno over the incident. National Disaster Response Force is carrying out rescue operations. Heavy rainfall has triggered flood-like situation in several districts in Bihar. Water levels in rivers such as Masan, Pandari, Lalbaikia, Shikarahana and Kandak have risen flowing heavy release of water from the Valmiki Nagar barrage. A flood alert has been sounded in Bihar's East Champaran, Gopalganj and West Champaran district amid instant rain in the state and neighbouring Nepal. In news from across the nation now, India recorded over 18,000 fresh cases of COVID-19 in a day after a gap of 130 days. With this, the active COVID-19 cases crossed the 1 lakh mark again after 122 days. The health ministry stated that 197.61 crore doses of COVID vaccine have been administered in the country so far. The onset of monsoon in the national capital has provided some respite from the sweltering heat and humid weather. However, heavy downpour led to severe water logging in many areas in Delhi. The IMD issued an orange alert in Delhi. The maximum temperature is likely to come down to 33 to 34 degrees Celsius by 1st of July. The Union Home Ministry has asked all states that there should be no delay in registration in FIRs in cases of crimes against SCs and STs. The states have also been directed to close monitor such cases where investigation goes beyond two months. Now time for some stories from the world of business and economy. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on Thursday allied concerns about the rupee that fell to a historic low of 79 against the dollar. She asserted that India is relatively better placed among major economies of the world and the impact of ongoing global events like high global crude prices and Ukraine-Russia crisis could not be ignored. RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das has called cryptocurrencies a real danger that needed to be asserted carefully. The government is finalizing a consultation paper on cryptocurrencies after discussions with various stakeholders, including the World Bank and the IMF. 
Das also warned of growing threats to cybersecurity, especially in wake of increased digitalization of the financial system. Banks and NBFCs have sufficient capital buffers to withstand further shocks in the economy amid increasing global uncertainty, the RBI has said in its 25th Financial Stability Report. The RBI also asserted that the Indian economy was well on the path of recovery. HSBC is all set to relaunch its private banking business in India, citing growing potential and catering to high net worth individuals in the wake of a growing Indian economy. HSBC called India top strategic market and that it was looking to quadruple its customer base in India over the next few years. Global markets also witnessed a declining trend with US and European incidies down by nearly 3%, except for Shanghai Composite, which traded high. Most Asian markets, including Hang Seng, Taiwan, Kospi, and Nikkei, 225 registered losses of 2%. It's time for a short break. For more news, stay tuned to the news. Welcome back after the break. You're watching the news. Now time for all the main developments from the Russia-Ukraine war front. In the latest developments in Russia-Ukraine war front, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced a fresh funding of £1 billion of military support to Ukraine at the NATO summit in Madrid on Thursday. It will go towards strengthening Ukraine's capabilities with sophisticated air defence systems, unscrewed aerial vehicles, innovative new electronic warfare equipment and much more. British Prime Minister said that UK will continue to stand squarely behind the Ukrainian people to ensure Russia fails in Ukraine. The latest announcement brings the total UK military support since the outbreak of war to £2.3 billion. The US Treasury Department has also announced a transfer of Rs 1.3 billion US dollars in economic aid to Ukraine. This is part of the initial 7.5 billion aid promised to Kyiv by the Biden administration in May. The US government said that it will be delivery. They reaffirm their resolute commitment to the people of Ukraine as they defend themselves against Putin's war of aggression and work to sustain their economy. Russia has claimed that it has withdrawn forces from Snake Island off Ukraine's coast in the Black Sea as what it called as a gesture of goodwill. Russia's defense ministry said the move shows that it is not blocking a humanitarian corridor to export agricultural products out of Ukraine. Ukraine's military said that Russians fled the island in two speedboats following a barrage of Ukrainian artillery and missile strikes. Ukraine and the West have accused Russian of blockading Ukrainian ports to prevent exports of grain, contributing to the digital food crisis. Russian forces continue shelling the eastern Ukrainian city of Lysychansk. Lysychansk, Luhansk governor, said on Thursday that Russian forces were trying to block a highway used to deliver supplies and fully encircle the city. He stated that Russians were storming the Lysychansk refinery as Ukrainian forces held their positions, while Russia claimed that it has taken control. Russia has now focused on the city of Lysychansk, the last remaining Ukrainian stronghold in the Luhansk province, after capturing nearby Sivredonex. The lower house of Russia's parliament gave final approval to a bill to allow banning of foreign news media. This is in response to other countries' action against Russian news outlets. The bill gives Russia's Prosecutor General the right to ban foreign outlets without court approval if another government is found carrying out hostile actions against Russia media abroad. Since the start of the Ukraine conflict, many significant independent news media shut down or suspended operations. Now time for some other global updates. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksha called his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin to explore options of purchasing oil from Moscow. Rajapaksha is also leaving on a tour of the United Arab Emirates to import fuel from the oil-rich Gulf nation. Here is our report.
In an attempt to overcome the fuel crisis in the country, the Sri Lankan government is operating only essential services till 10th of July. Schools have been shut for two weeks and employees of public sector offices have been asked to work from home. Last month, Sri Lanka purchased 90,000 tons of oil from Russia. President Gotabaya Rajapaksha has meanwhile also called the Russian president to import fuel from Russia. The Sri Lankan government said Rajapaksha would also leave for UAE to discuss with their leaders to import fuel. Indian credit lines for fuel and essentials have provided lifelines to the island nation until the ongoing talks with the International Monetary Fund could lead to a possible bailout. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe has said the country will need up to $5 million to pay for its fuel imports. State-run fuel retailer Ceylon Petroleum Corporation has said no new orders have been placed. The fuel shortages have impacted all sectors with reduced production contributing to the negative growth. The government's statistics office has said the economic growth in the first quarter is projected to see a minus 1.6% growth due to the economic crisis. Bureau Report, Sansa TV. And in news from other parts of the world, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., also known as Bongbong Bong Marcos, assumed the presidency in the Philippines after a landslide election victory. He also swore in his cabinet after the inauguration. Marcos Jr. is the son of former Philippine dictator Ferdinand Marcos, who lost power in a revolt backed by the army. Marcos Jr. succeeds Rodrigo Duterte as the country's 17th president. His vice president, Sara Duterte, is the daughter of Rodrigo Duterte. Israel's parliament voted to dissolve itself, marking the end of a year-old experimental coalition government. It triggered the fifth election for the country in less than four years. Foreign Minister of Israel Yair Lapid will be the country's caretaker prime minister on Friday. Yair will be the 14th prime minister, taking over from Naftali Bennett, Israel's shorter-serving prime minister. The motion to dissolve passed with 92 lawmakers in favour and none against. New elections will be held on November 1st this year. Shanghai reopened its Disney Resort theme park, popularly known as Disneyland, on Thursday as domestically transmitted cases of COVID-19 in China's largest city remain at zero. People's excitement can be observed with long queues of tourists for flocking in despite the strict COVID-19 prevention measures in place. China implemented hardline zero COVID policy for stemming the growth of cases and deaths from the virus despite the enormous cost to the economy. The park was closed on March 21st as COVID-19 cases in Shanghai surged and led to a city lockdown. Kitanji Brown-Jackson officially became a justice three months after she won confirmation to the Supreme Court. Jackson 51 will be sworn as the Supreme Court's 116th justice after the voluntary retirement of Justice Stephen Birrell. Jackson will be the first black woman and the fourth woman in the nine-member court. The Senate confirmed her nomination in April. Afghanistan's Taliban rulers on Thursday held their first major gathering of Islamic clerics and tribal elders after seizing power in August, with over 3,000 coming to the capital for the event. Held in the Loya Jirga Hall of Kabul's Polytechnic University, the meeting aimed to address grievances and a variety of issues although its agenda was not announced publicly. Now time for all the sporting action in our sports segment. Starting with badminton, two-time Olympic medalist PV Sindhu has entered the quarter-finals in the Malaysia Open in Kuala Lumpur today. Sindhu had to come from behind to beat Thailand's Pithaye Ponchai won. The world number seven defeated her Thai opponent 19-21, 21-9, in the second round clash. Sindhu will next face her nemesis, Tai Su Ying of Chinese Tepe in the last eight face-off. HS Pranoy, the world number 21, also advanced to the quarter-finals of the men's singles with an East 21-15, 21-7 victory over fourth seed Zhao Tian Chen of Chinese Tepe, one of the heroes of India's epic Thomas Cup triumph, the unseeded Pranoy will lock horns with seventh seed Indonesian Jonathan Christie in the quarterfinals. 
Moving on to tennis, Andy Murray lost in the second round of Wimbledon to the 20th seed American John Isner 4-6-6-7-7-6, 4-6 at the All England Club in London. Keeping a disappointing afternoon and evening in the grass court Grand Slam tournament's main stadium for the locals. Prior to Murray versus Isner, the host country's other leading player, reigning US Open champion Emma Rodukano was eliminated by Caroline Garcia of France, 6-3, 6-3 in the women's signal. In cricket, India take on England in the fifth and final test of the unfinished 2021 series at Edgbaston, Birmingham, beginning tomorrow. India were leading England 2-1 till the fourth test played at the Oval between 2nd and 6th September 2021. Just before the fifth test was to begin, Covid broke out in the India camp and the match had to be rescheduled. England seemed to be in much better form this time and it would be a big challenge for India to win against the host team. India opener K.L. Rahul has undergone a successful surgery for sports hernia in Germany and is expected to be out of competitive cricket for another couple of months. Rahul, who was forced to opt out of the home T20 International Series against South Africa earlier this month, has over the years had recurrent lower abdominal-related fitness issues, included growing strains and hamstring injuries. Now, before we take a wrap, let's take a look at the headlines once again. Monsoon session of parliament to be held from 18 July to 12 of August. Legislative business to conducted over 18 sittings in the session. Scrutiny of nominations for presidential elections. Papers of Draupadi Murmu and Yashwan Sin are found to be in order. Voting to be held on 18th of July. Eknath Shinde becomes new Chief Minister of Maharashtra. Devendra Farnavis takes oath as Deputy Chief Minister. Cabinet to be expanded soon. Government bringing in policy changes to promote MSMEs. Prime Minister Modi underlines their role in shaping self-reliant India at Entrepreneur India Meet. The annual Amarnath Yatra starts from Pehelgam and Baltal camp. First batch of pilgrims leaves for Holy Cave. Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha performs puja at Shrine. That's all we have in this bulletin. To keep yourself updated, stay tuned to Sunset Television. Good night.